And we're back. We're the Dudes of Horror. I'm Toots. Horn Boy. Damien. All Hi right. guys. What's up? And today's uh, today's review is going to be on an an oldie but a goodie. Uh, it's it's a it's a movie that I grew up watching, and it's it's John Carpenter's They Live. Uh, and and it's yeah it's horror sci-fi it's more sci-fi than horror but it does have some horror elements in there. And I remember watching this movie, I think, when it first came out, like, on TV. Uh, and this movie came out in 88. So, I would imagine I probably saw it maybe, like, the year after. Probably, like, either late 88 or, like, 1989. But I remember really enjoying this movie when I first saw it as a kid. And then when I, I was watching when I was older, uh, I got to appreciate more of the, you know, the, the symbolism and the you know, basically what John Carpenter was trying to tell in terms of, in terms of commercialism and, and, you know, basically materialism from the 1980s. Uh, so, so what, what you guys, what, what were your initial reactions to it? All I knew was you said to horn. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> no, you, no, you, no, you can go first and then, and then we'll introduce him. <laughs> Why? Because, <laughs> no, 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 no for, that way, yeah, that way you can vent out. <laughs> No, I, um, well, I'm ashamed to say I've heard, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I've heard of this movie for years, and I've, I've seen a lot of reviews on it, but I barely saw the movie myself for the first time earlier today, and I did like the movie. Like, I do like They Live, I thought it was cool, like, but it's like I was telling you, like, if I would have seen it when I was a kid, I probably wouldn't have liked it. Because I wouldn't have understood all the like political statements and yeah. all those kind of things that, that John Carpenter was making with the film. So it probably would have turned me off as a kid, but seeing it for the first time as an adult, because it's a pretty like intelligent like sci-fi horror movie. So and that was actually one of the criticisms that it got mm -hmm. was that a lot of people at the time didn't want to be um, like didn't want to be preached to by this like intelligent sci-fi movie but but it's like since its release in 88 it's uh, become like a like a huge cult classic like it has like a huge cult following yeah so. and, and and I like I liked it at that time not because no I mean not because the message it was trying to say because I mean I was like the main things I liked about the movie was that Roddy Piper was in it or is in it, <laughs> and, and and I grew up a wrestling fan, and I still am. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh, cool, Roddy Piper's in this movie, and and I also like the fact that like I like the sci-fi elements to it, you know, the aliens and the whole idea of the whole idea of putting on these sunglasses, these special sunglasses, and you see like this other world, you know, and and, and Roddy Piper's character, John Nada. Is trying to is trying to warn people, or at least trying to warn Keith David's character. Yeah. Uh, you know about this about this other world. Uh, so that's that's what I liked it. And then when I was when I was older, I liked more of the you know like the political aspects of it and the you know the 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 meanings behind everything. You know? Well, see, that's what I wanted to I wanted to say that I saw a lot of parallels in this like script that John Carpenter actually wrote, right? Mm -hmm. The like that aspect when, when uh, when Roddy Piper's character discovers the glasses where he can like see the truth. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Like, didn't it didn't it kind of remind you of like the allegory of the cave? That old story, like, like when he's trying to get Keith to Keith David's character to see what he sees, mm -hmm. and he's resisting him. He's like, no, you know, I'm happy where I'm at. Like, like you were talking about it. We're more like we read that scene where he says. Uh, where Keith David's like, like, look, I got a job now. Yeah, and yeah. Whatever you got, I don't do, want to be, you, you I don't do want to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't want to be involved in none of this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and then it actually goes on to the fight scene. Mm -hmm. Like, it leads to that fight scene. Yeah, which is one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen. Which, right. no, it sucks. <laughs> All right. You know, All right. And then I also, like, I also saw the, the parallels to, like, one of my favorite books is, 
the George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, where, sure. the, where the hackers are hacking into the to the news and they're coming out just like Emmanuel Goldstein in, in 1984. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how he hacks into like the mainframe or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And he comes out and he's preaching to people, you know, like like you're all being misled, like, yeah. and and I was like, yeah, like I see a lot of parallels to a lot of those things that I studied when I was young, like mm -hmm. so. This is actually a very like, like yeah, there's there's a pro wrestler in the lead and there's all these like fight scenes and stuff, but it's actually a very intelligent sci-fi horror movie, like yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's that's why I said like sorry, that, that's why I said like. When I was younger, yeah, I liked all like the action and the you know and Roddy Piper and Keith David. And I did like the fight scene. Yeah, and and I guess since I saw it like for the first time yesterday, that's why I'm like, if I would have seen it as a kid, I told you guys, I think mm -hmm. I would have liked it. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate it either. It's not a really extremely bad movie. I mean, Teen Wolf is bad, I think, but <laughs> worse than this one. There it is. But worse this one, the time. Yeah, <laughs> mark the Teen time. Wolf. We mentioned yeah. Teen Wolf. Mark but the this time. one, this one was. Um, like I just didn't like it for several reasons, and I kind of explained to you guys why. Um, yeah. I I thought like the music was good, but it was over overdone. Like mm -hmm. they overused it. I was like I'm like come on, like. But you mean the score, right? The, yeah, the score. The score. It's the music itself was good, but the times they used it, I was like they overused it, and then sometimes some of the song, some of the score didn't go along well with the scene. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Especially the scene when he gets thrown out the the window, mm -hmm. and then this weird song comes out. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, porn music. Like nothing's happening. He's just there, like under the bridge, and he's yeah, just there. Yeah. Oh, and that happened. Okay. And I'm like, at least that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. But the other parts were like the you know when he puts on the sunglasses, and then he sees so obviously the, the aliens or whatever you want to call them. Um, I was like, okay, well that's pretty cool. But then when after that he's like, he's just this badass sharpshooter like and he knows how to shoot right away when he meets the cops mm -hmm. and i'm like come on you didn't even build that up a little bit like could have said he was a you know maybe he was in the army or something yeah i mean i can i can understand your criticism. but that's me though and yeah and then little by little i was like it, it drags for me in the mm -hmm. beginning because it takes a while to kind of build Mm -hmm. But it does have some good parts, I mean, I admit, but the fight scene is not one of those for me. <laughs> it just takes too fucking long. How dare you now? It takes too long, <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, just, yeah, just leave him alone. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to do anything. Yeah, like, he's, still, he's still like, no, no, I got to show you those goddamn sunglasses. Like, yeah, I put them on, like, you know? Yeah, but, but yeah, that's, that's why I said, like, when I was a kid, I liked all that stuff. And I was laughing through and the whole thing because yeah. I thought it was only going to last a little bit. Uh -huh. And then it kept on going. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and, and but, but yeah, like I said, like, I liked all that stuff when I was a kid, but I got to appreciate all the political aspects of it when I was older. Yeah. And, and that's why it holds up for me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I can understand your criticism. No, and like, I see, I I, and I see your guys' point with the political. I can see that mm -hmm. as well. But I just thought they could have done better. But then I'm like, well, it was the '80s, so yeah. You know? So I don't hate the movie. I just don't like it. <laughs> oh yeah, you, yeah, that's fine. But Roddy what Piper, the, you bastard! No, I think Roddy Piper did a good job. Though. I yeah, I thought he wasn't gonna do good, but no, he did a pretty good job. Uh, the best actor I think was Keith David though. Oh yeah, he's really good. So that's why that's why when like when I mentioned that we saw some of some of uh, Tales from the Hood too, I'm like, like he deserves better. Jesus, he deserves better. Damn it. <laughs> well, you how many uh, was it just this one and the thing, or did he do other movies with John Carpenter? I'm trying to think of other movies. For Carpenter, but I don't, I don't recall him in anything else. Yeah. Just the thing and, and, and this one. But I mean, that's a fair criticism, though, because the movie yeah. was real low budget. Mm -hmm. Like, what you say, one more they had to overuse the 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 theme song and the yeah. score. Yeah. Because he probably John Carpenter probably it's couldn't probably afford. Yeah. He probably couldn't afford to get like any songs from any bands or anything. Yeah, like that. and that's why that's why he tends to use his own music. From my understanding, is it just to kind of... No, and the music was awesome. Things. I really like the music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I can understand, like, yeah, it is It is a little slow. It is a little slow at the beginning to kind of build it up. And yeah, they could have developed Roddy Piper's character a little bit more, you know, as a, but like I said, it was. it's one of those, and I know it's a bit of a cop-out nowadays, but it's the 80s, you know? It's like, people would do cocaine all the time. Well, it was the 80s. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, like American Psycho. Yeah. But you know, uh, Tuts, how you were saying earlier how the fight scene was was like uh, one of the famous ones from one of the John Wayne movies. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like I was kind of thinking like the the structure of They Live, like how it's written, is it's kind of structured like an old western. Like how a drifter wanders into town at the beginning. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. nobody. He, kind of. Yeah. He tries he, to get a job. Yeah, and then yeah. he stumbles upon this like conspiracy, conspiracy going yeah. on, and he's like the lone hero that has to try to like stop it. It's like the movie's structured like that, like a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. But yeah. John Carpenter was. Isn't he a fan of like the old westerns and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Like the first. Uh, well, when I was researching it, it was. Uh, I was researching that when he was a college student in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. that you know about it, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't, I that don't he know. Was, he, was, uh, he, he was uh, assisting on the production of like a low-budget Western like in, when he was in film school okay. that actually was nominated for an Oscar or something. Oh, like okay. the best, best short film. Wow. That's awesome. I didn't oh. know that. Yeah, so I don't I, think I knew that. So I think... It's. I think he structured the, this movie after like even like Big Trouble in Little China is kind of structured the same way. Wait, well, yeah, originally, the, originally that one was supposed to be a western. Yeah. Yeah. So and I then, think, huh. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. And then I like when he first comes out without the shirt. I'm like, God damn, he's built. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, fuck. I don't remember him like that. And he's yeah, like, fucking thinking. has a six pack and he's like this humongous person. Yeah. And and. And at that time, of course, you know, the mullets and everything. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like at the time, well, that's when he was still wrestling. I think he left wrestling for a while and then wanted to do movies. But I know he, he came back to wrestling like later, you know, yeah. I think like in the early 90s. Uh, but yeah, like that's when he was like in his prime. You know? Yeah. Uh, I just, but it was like I was telling you all before, when, like I, don't, I never remembered Roddy Piper being like that shredded. I because he was in shape, like yeah, well, yeah, I, mean, I know he was in shape. Yeah, yeah I don't remember him being like that either, like in wrestling. Because he's still mm -hmm. big. In he might have movie, worked like extra he, to. Put yeah, for movie. this movie, yeah. yeah. He he got he got cut. <laughs> yeah, he got cut. One of the things that I I wanted to see and it never happened was where I want I was wondering like what happens if the um, the aliens put on the glasses themselves like what happens to them do they get destroyed do they see something completely different or does it mess with their programming or whatever I wanted to see that but it never happened and it, I was kind of destroyed when they killed Keith, Keith David because I think I I liked him yeah, yeah so I was like no why him like all he wanted to do was to work yeah, <laughs> and he still got involved, and he got killed. You see, yeah. you see, Roddy Piper, you see what you did. And they broke, and they broke his back. Uh, and now he, no, back window too on his car. <laughs> yeah, now he his kids have no dad, and I'm just like, man. He just wanted his job. He just wanted yeah, his job. He just, he he just wanted just, to work. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like, but yeah, no, I guess I guess it's one of those things where you can you can be curious about it. What what would happen if, if an alien put one of those one of those sunglasses on? But I don't think it would really make a difference. And, and then, if anything, that would report the sunglasses. And then I was also thinking, like, are they okay? They're aliens or whatever. But then I was thinking, I started making like, oh no, it's just people that have so much money that they have more control, and that's how they control the people, you know. Yeah, because because anybody that follows them, like regular humans, are also also have a larger bank account and like yeah. nicer cars and you know bigger houses. You know, and, and you know, like the familiars and the blade yeah. and the blade movies. Yeah, with yeah. Bi with bigger houses and everything, and then and then, you know, and that's how they can win them over, and and you know, and you and you can kind of think, well, with these aliens, instead of just flat out invading people mm -hmm. or the planet, you know, they're just kind of sneaking into everybody's infrastructure and then just and kind of taking over. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, like, uh, Wormboy, what you were saying about that was like exactly on point to what John Carpenter was trying to do was like weren't these aliens supposed to be like representative of like the the rich upper like the one percent and the yeah, 80s the 1%. And, yeah. The, and the middle class is, is slowly like dissipating and the, and the working class the poor is like growing and growing and growing and, yeah. Yeah, and they're all like this becoming like the slaves of, of the one percent 
Yeah, yeah, because because in the so movie, like the whole Reaganomics in the eighties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah cause, cause you, in the movie, like at the beginning, once you see that shanty town, you know, and all the poor, cheap. yeah, and all the poor people there, and they're the ones that either you know they they they're working began construction. The, yeah, they're doing the blue collar jobs there, and then they they're building this resistance. Yeah. You know, and then of course the rich people, you know, are the the ones that are. Either the aliens are being taken over by the aliens. And then when, when, when you don't see them, and uh, when he takes out the sunglasses and you just see a, a normal human being, mm -hmm. um, they're very snobby. They're like, oh, excuse me, like, yeah. mm -hmm. like I'm better yeah. than you kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's like, like the guy in the news. In He's the, like, remember that part with the, he puts on the sunglasses and he tells the girl, like, oh, you... You you look normal now, but now yeah. you look like what did he say? Oh, formaldehyde face. Yeah, yeah. Like, that this was one's like, fun. Yeah, like, you you're, you're okay. okay. Yeah, but you this formaldehyde one. face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And I know a lot of uh, I was researching that a lot of Roddy Piper's lines were uh, ad lib. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, the bubblegum one, I think, was yeah. ad lib. Yeah. And I think that was one of the reasons why what we were talking about earlier, why John Carpenter used a pseudonym. Mm -hmm. For the, the for the screenplay, like screenplay by Frank Armitage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the in the opening credits, was because he was actually letting, he was actually like letting the cast and crew like come up with ideas while the, as they were shooting, yeah. And so then he was using them in the movie. So. Yeah, yeah, because because, yeah, there there was a script, but all but that script was based on all these ideas from every yeah. which way. Yeah. Yeah, so so he didn't want to take credit for it. He was like, oh, I'll just put a pseudonym. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those, uh, for me, like, especially as a kid, you know, just hearing a formaldehyde face, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, hearing Roddy Piper say that, and then just blow people away, because <laughs> they're like, ah, oh, these rich snobs that are aliens. Yeah. You know? Uh, the part at the end where he uses a gun, uh, Tear down the satellite, and he he throws the finger. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I was laughing there. I was like, oh my god, this is, this is so cheesy. Yeah, and 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 I like the way they handled the ending because it's not just like a happy ending where oh he's no. the hero and stuff. Yeah. Like he dies. Yeah, it's yeah. very bleak. Yeah, it's bleak. All but uh, he but accomplished he his goal. Yeah, he accomplished yeah. his goal. Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite scene in the movie was that grocery store scene. Mm -hmm. Because, like, what I was saying, where he, that's the first time that he realizes without a doubt that there's, like, a bigger conspiracy. Yeah. Where he sees the, where that alien woman, the formaldehyde fake. Yeah. yeah. Where she talks into her watch, like, uh, we, I, we've got one that can see. And mm -hmm. then he knows, like, oh, okay. Like, and he sees here. the rest of them coming down the aisle and they're all talking on the Yeah, that part, that part yeah. looked creepy. I was like, oh, shit, there, there's a lot of them. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I think the re I think the reason uh, th this is what I think. That one of the reasons that John Carpenter had him kind of ad lib is the fact that like he was a wrestler, so they're used to cutting promos. You know, as long as they know the bullet points. Yeah. Well, at at the time nowadays, like everything's like no everything's scripted to the yeah. point where you have to memorize stuff. But back then it was like, well, as long as you mention these things, but you can make up everything else. In between, yeah. So he was like, "Oh yeah, well, you know, just make up whatever." And I think that's what he did with the fight scene too. <laughs> like just, yeah. just improvise. He probably had more, of course, more than five minutes, but he, he, t he just like just do what you do in the wrestling ring, you know. But kind of focus on this and say these things, and you know. Yeah, because they rehearsed it for, yeah. you know, what I looked up is that they rehearsed it for three weeks or so. Jesus. So, Christ. you know, based on what I read, <laughs> that's so, long. Yeah, but but of course they probably put like a smorgasbord of like moves together and then okay, yeah. let's just structure it from there. Well, for a low budget movie, that was not a bad fight scene, I don't think. Yeah. Like and then but I mean, you have you have Roddy Piper who's a pro wrestler, so he knows how to he knows how to fake taking hits. And mm -hmm. He knows how to but make it look real. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I thought I mean, I for being as old as this movie is. And then how low budget it was. I think it was like like John Carpenter did the best he could with what he had. But yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. I don't I don't take that away from him. He did, but I still don't like this movie. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for me with John Carpenter, his best movies are when he has very little and he works with what he has. Right. Yeah, like I mentioned yeah. before with the thing, you know, where that was low budget. Halloween. Halloween, you know, and and. 
he manages to work around all that. Like, like those limitations, he manages to work around that. And usually, like, gold comes out at the end, you know? Because you have Halloween, or, the other or, thing. Or shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think once he gets more into, like, bigger budgets and, like, more Hollywood, like, more of the mainstream, that's when it kind of gets kind of crappy. Because he has a lot of other people involved. Yeah, like, he doesn't have that as much creative control. But when you get into, you know, like, The Fog, The Thing... Halloween. That seems like having to work around a low budget is what seems to like stimulate his creativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's there's two of them here. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you realize that? Yeah. Like you two are the one yeah, we like this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Put on the glasses <laughs> wrong. Yeah, one of them. We have two of them here. No, but I mean like no no no, but what you said earlier, one boy about how this movie could benefit from a remake. Oh yeah, I can, that I can, I see, like, I can yeah. see that. Like somebody can take like all the best ideas that John Carpenter was able to do, but oh, then yeah. work with an actual budget, like from a studio where they can make the special effects, like, like, mm -hmm. like really badass. They can use the rock, like you said. Yeah, yeah, with yeah the rock, I can see the rock. With the rock is the rock. And then with the uh, hit girl chick can be the, you know, the. Oh, <laughs> What's it called? Oh, uh, no, they'll give Megan Fox. Megan Fox. No. It's, no, because instead of Megan Foster, <laughs> uh, Megan Fox. Bumblebee and <laughs> no. John Cena. No. John Cena. This be, movie deserves no, no, better. Or it could be John Cena. I mean. Uh, no, The Rock. Imagine The Rock. The Rock is And imagine he has a like a thing where he's like, you know, Kevin you can't Hart. see me. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Kevin Hart could be the key. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> God, God, damn. Yeah, actually, that would be. I would, I would watch that. No, it'll be. Then it'll be more of a <laughs> comedy at that point. And instead of the sunrises, it could be a fucking uh, smartphone. Uh, you know, if you downloaded this app YouTube. that's like illegal or something, and you need to type in the code, and only so many people have the code. No, I think. Well, I mean, with the remake, with the remake, they can make it their own. Fine. I can hey, see the rock playing. If any studio character. makes this movie, what, what do we always we want? Our cut. Co copyright. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. No, not the time. Who Give us our time? cut. Yeah, <laughs> we want exactly our cut. Exactly. Nine thirty. They might have already done. It. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, now, like... now I'm just imagining. <laughs> now I'm just imagining all those scenes, but with Kevin Hart. <laughs> I think I already got a job. I already got two kids. My wife's gonna kill yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I already got a job. I'll be fine. Now you messed up last night because I got home late. <laughs> It's like, man, you yeah. gotta help me though. You're my only friend. I, yeah. I just got this job where you work. Or watch it. Instead, instead of the rock, it's like Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill again, and then they're doing that shit. That'd oh. be funny. <laughs> Jump Street. Yeah. Twenty five. They live. They live on on Jump Street. Jump no, Street. it's because I've always thought that about Escape from New York. That it could benefit <laughs> from a reboot. Like, oh yeah. I love that. That movie. one. That one. They really have to be careful in terms of how they're gonna do it. Well, it's been it's like, tried before, but the mm -hmm. project always falls apart. Like, because I've always thought, like, like John Carpenter writes these scripts that are so good, and he makes these movies that are so good. Mm -hmm. But it's like you said, it's when he does these sci-fi movies, it's always the budget where it falls short because the effects are real cheap. Mm -hmm. And it's just like if you could make that movie, but with really good effects, like, man, it could be awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. like. I can I can see this movie being remade. I can I can kind of picture Escape from New York kind of being remade. Although that one I'm a bit apprehensive. The one like I'm dead against is Big Trouble Little China. Yeah, they don't even. Uh, that like, one. like the fuck effects you, were, leave that movie alone. That no, crazy. it's because the effects were good enough in that movie. Yeah, like they stand the test of time. And and basically with with Big Trouble, it's more. Yeah, it had a lot of you know like. Elements from like kung fu movies and westerns and all these things, and and eighties action movies and whatnot. But it was like putting in a bunch of ingredients in a pot that normally don't belong. But what you get is like this amazing casserole. Yeah. That's that's why that movie works. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I agree with that. But I love that. In movie. regards to oh yeah, me too. In, in regards to they live, what do you guys like give it like as a score? I would give it a B. Yeah. I think it's. I honestly think like it's that that the script alone is like. I, I don't know. I would give it a B. Like the only, it's like I said. Like the only thing I don't. I would. I would downgrade the movie is because of like the low budget and the special effects are are pretty bad. 
Yeah, like yeah. I mean, I like the the makeup. I like the makeup of the aliens. Like like once you see them like in in color. Yeah. That was makeup. Huh? Kind of was CGI. No, it was makeup. This is pre CGI. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> like, uh, the one that. No, it was not. Yeah. Really? Wow, it, it, it was it, 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 yeah, it did a good job. Yeah, like, like I liked I liked how the aliens, you know, they look appeared. creepy. Yeah, yeah they look creepy because you can kind of see their like skeleton, and then a little bit robotic kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I saw. That's why. That's why. I like Terminator. That, yeah, that's why when I when I researched it, it said like, oh well, Carpenter kind of thought like, well, these aliens are corrupting humans, so it's like. So these are these aliens are basically like humans are just like corrupted. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I get no. I was just I was just thinking about it last time when when like pay, like pick a damn grade. Don't just do yeah, that. pick a damn yeah, grade. Don't, <laughs> don't, so don't be it's, like it's between kind of, us. You have to set. set all some right, stuff. all right. I'll I'll. Uh, what were we gonna say? No, go ahead. Because I already get, I give it a B. Like I give it a solid B. I give it I give it a B plus. Yeah, it does have its its. It it does have its its flaws. It's not a perfect movie, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And I think the reason I give it a plus is because since I saw it as a kid, I got to appreciate it more as an adult. Yeah, I think. And sorry guys, but yeah, I saw it as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna you know, give it a plus. You don't have to apologize to me. <laughs> but we all have, we're, that's why we do reviews, right? Yeah. yeah. We all have different opinions and. I want to note for the record that I now own my own copy of the Blu-ray of They Live. <laughs> it's, it's in it's my a, <coughs> waste of money. <coughs> it's in my horror collection. It's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, I was. And, and, and I was gonna mention because Roddy Piper started kind of coming out in movies and whatnot at the time, and even kind of later on in his in his career, and I was like, did you know there was a there was a pilot for a show called Tag Team with him and Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Oh God! It exists because I saw it when it first came that out. It, horrible. it didn't get picked up for a series, Thank but God. I, but yeah, it's basically these two wrestlers. <laughs> Thank God! These two wrestlers this is like lose their jobs, they get kicked out, <laughs> and then they and then they get jobs as police, like police officers, mm -hmm. and then that's that was the whole premise of the show. of the show. Like like wrestlers turn cops, and then like they just they, be, they do good cops. Uh, yeah, they do cop stuff, and they're partners. Roddy Piper and Jesse Ventura. That's hard. So it's like Roddy. <laughs> so it's like Roddy Piper and Jesse Ventura starring in uh, Car Fifty Four. Where are you? Or what was the name of that old? Car Fifty Four. Yeah, where are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I think it was more of a, these two big wrestlers. <laughs> I think I think it was more of a, like a drama, like a comedy drama kind of thing, oh, if you can believe that. But it See, exists. This is, this, is it exists. <laughs> this is information to me, so I'm gonna yeah. look this up as soon as we're. I'm not gonna. I that. saw it when I was a kid. And like I said, I was watching wrestling way back when, so so of course I'm gonna like it. But of course, if I were to watch it today, I'm like, what is this? Because you know what it made me. This makes me think of that cheesy <laughs> trailer with Jesse Ventura and Major League Two. Oh, the oh, black guy. Uh, uh, fell the hardest. Mine of the deadest. Remember? Oh yeah, the black, black thunder. hammer, white lightning. <laughs> was it black thunder, white lightning? Or no, it's black hammer, hammer white, white lightning. lightning. Yeah, <laughs> where he's like Jesse Ventura. Mine fell the hardest. <laughs> didn't, he, didn't he jump off at one point? He yeah. had the Tarzan like. Yeah, you know? but he falls like 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 I don't know like fifty stories and he just lands on his feet. Yeah. Like nothing in his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but going back to the grades, I, mm -hmm. for this movie, I oh, I, got yeah. I would give it a C minus, just because like all the things I've already said. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't think the the fight scene was that great. The acting was okay. I mean, Roddy Piper did do a little bit better than I thought. But I know, I, you know, it just, it was like Team Wolf, but not that bad. Well, okay. But, the, I mean, I don't want to, and it's, it's funny because I didn't see it growing up. If I had seen it growing up, like Killer Clowns, then I would probably appreciate it more. All right, so what if, what if instead of, I don't know if this would have made any difference, but what if... So you're going to find some way to get him to say... No, like no, 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 it's not going to work. Right. No, instead of Roddy Piper, what if it was Kurt Russell? That was... That would have been not... Yeah. That would have probably character. given it a, a B plus for me. Because I like Kurt Russell. Yeah, because I could have seen Kurt Russell play this part. Yeah. And, and the acting wasn't bad by Piper. It's just... To me, it was just too slow. It was entertaining at some points, but not too much. They... I don't know. They did so many things that I was just like, oh... Like... It's just like, is it over yet kind of thing? 
Yeah, like, and I mean no offense to anybody that likes it, but it's just that's how I felt. Yeah, that's fine. And then I was at the end, I was like, you know, oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I enjoyed it when I watched it, mm -hmm. but I mean I can I can understand everything that you're saying. Yeah. Anymore. Like I, I I would get that like any if somebody would say things like that. It's just because movies like this that have that type of premise or like I love movies like it's really hard for me to not like it it can be like the most terribly structured movie and I'm still gonna like dig it you know what I mean so yeah so I kind of I, I get that yeah I mean I like I said I can understand your criticism like yeah I can I can see the flaws in this movie you know but but I, I still enjoy it yeah of course you know uh, I mean you you do like Team Wolf too so I did not like I Team mean, Wolf, Team Wolf. <laughs> Or was that another one? House of the Dead? That's the one you liked. I did not oh. like House of the Oh yeah, you <laughs> brought it up. I didn't say it. I didn't say it this time. And I hated that movie. I still we was joking. We are never going to be able to do a video yeah. or a podcast without mentioning Teen Wolf or House of the Dead or what's the other one? Uh, oh, I can one. Which oh, we're probably going to have to come fuck that movie. <laughs> <laughs> God. We cannot do it. I give up. I actually want to see the new one. Like, there's no way. Like, <laughs> Just to rag on it. Oh, why? With, with Hornswoggle? Yeah. That one? Oh. No, no, the, the, the other one. There's a newer, newer one. Oh, yeah, God. it's not Warwick Davis. No. It's some other guy. No, Hornswoggle came out. Is it Hornswoggle? He came out? No, there's point. another one, a brand new one. I think. If it's not the one you're talking about right it's now, like it's the previous one. Then. Yeah, it's Le Leprechaun, Laser, Returns. I don't know, some yeah. bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, those are my thoughts, I mean. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but well, like so I said, you think you think with Kurt Russell it would have been a, oh, a, a yeah. larger improvement. Like, oh, yeah. Right yeah I'm yeah. still tripping, like, there's no way, we're, there's no way we can do a video without mentioning, <laughs> without mentioning Team Wolf or House of the Dead, or I know there's another one, so or all the worst card. Thanks Killing, or... Thanksgiving. Oh, I think Thanksgiving was the new. That one was funny though. <laughs> that was like the new low. That was just comedy, you know? like genius, I think. Yeah, but but imagine if if John Carpenter didn't meet Roddy Piper at WrestleMania three, like, hey, how would you like to be my movie? It probably would have been Carl. Oh, I wonder how much he got paid. I don't know. Well, this movie was like technically a success because mm -hmm. of the low budget. Yeah. It made money back. Mm -hmm. so. I recommend anybody out there. I recommend they live. Yeah, me I too. I think it's a good cult classic sci-fi horror movie from the eighties. Yeah, like John Carpenter. You know, like. yeah, I I recommend this movie. Uh, like it's a yeah, it has eighties cheese in it, but it's not mm, cheese. It, it's not. <laughs> it's not to the point where it's not it's not dated per se. Over Yeah. Like it's not it's not dated per se. It's not like you're gonna see a bunch of DeLoreans and you know a bunch of like Rubik's those cubes. yeah Rubik's cubes and people like with a bunch of Mohawks and stuff. Like no, like like you know you'll it's see yeah it's a it's appropriate. You'll see a couple things here and there like the like Roddy Piper's mullet. That's a bit dated, but other than that, like like this movie can take place today if you were to see it. You know, like the whole premise, oh, yeah. the whole premise of it. You know, everything that happens in that movie, you know, could take place in a movie today, you know. So, it, to, like I said, to me, it still holds up. Yeah, and I, I agree with Warren Boy that they, this movie should be remade. Mm -hmm. I think it could benefit from yeah. a reboot. Yeah. Alright. So, I guess that's our review, guys. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think. <laughs> We're here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Yeah. <laughs> and we're out of bubblegum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, more fucking bubblegum. Yeah. <laughs> go see They Live. Mama I, don't like title <laughs> tales. If you, if you haven't seen They Live, go see it. Yeah. yeah I just, really I just wanted to do a review. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they had to take it too far. Yeah. So I wanted to do a review. Yeah. But you had to bring up Team Wolf. I, I just want to be left alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So we're the dudes of horror. Uh, I'm Toots. Worm Boy. Damien. Catch you guys next time.